Hello there and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky. I am the RN Genius, but you may call me Eric and for some bizarre reason she does not want to move. Excuse me, why are you doing this? Am I not focused on the game? Yes I am. That is, um, very interesting. Uh, that, that, let's, let's load the game file, um... Yes, maybe that will fix it. Yep, that fixed it. Okay. I do not want to even think about why that just happened, but we are here and we are very we are basically in before the festival, before the great play, and for that I have to actually get up my um voice acting mode. So we're going to talk to a few more people until we um, do that. So, who are we going to talk to? Who who have we even left to talk to? I wonder what typical classes here are like. Haha, okay. <laughs> today we are on standby. We're like the information desk. We can explain the social studies periodical in plainer terms if ever anyone asks. Mm -hmm. I came here with my son to check out the Royal Academy campus. We've got to get them focused on passing next year's entrance exams. Logic. If you're interested, come and take a look. Okay, I feel like I've talked to him before. Hmm, my class is fairly low key. To be honest, I think the research periodical's pretty plain. But it's okay. I'm just glad we have readers. Sure. Oh, there's something to look at. It lists the most important exports. Oh, I remember Logical standing right here. Most something exports okay this is not the first recording that I'm doing today by the way I'm just um, getting my um, commentary mode up so I am ready for the festival and don't mess up every single line which would be unfortunate or oh, look who we have here so this is the campus which is funded through the royal coffers hmm I find it someone lacking they haven't even a, they have not even a single gilded bird feeder <sighs> As the Queen's nephew, I ought to give it a thorough investigation. Investigation. I, I did the exact same mis mistake yesterday as well. And this seems to be the exact, like, same thing he said, huh? Okay, he just moved. I wonder why that is. Is it just me, or are there more people than usual? Yeah, probably just you. Miss Chloe! Oh, you're all here! Hey, our kiddos! Glad you could make it. Are you having fun? Yeah, it's awesome! I hate to. I ate so much candy, I puked! I told you not to be such a pig! Haha, <laughs> is Matron Theresa with you? Hey, yep, she's talking to those people over there! There she is! Good afternoon, all! Matron Theresa! Good afternoon, Matron. Thank you very much for inviting us here today. The children and I have enjoyed it greatly. Hey, Miss Chloe, when's your play thing supposed to start? We've all been looking forward to it. I see. Well, you'll have to wait just a little bit longer. Did you know that both Estelle and Joshua are going to be in the play with me? Really? That's gonna be so cool! What part are you going to be playing, Mr. Joshua? Um. Well, how how to how to, how to put this? Uh, um. Haha! <laughs> you'll just have to wait and see, won't you? Oh, by the way, are you guys still playing in Min uh, stay, uh, staying in Minoria? Yes, through the continued good we, uh, uh, through the continued continued goodwill of the innkeepers. That said, however... Huh? Hmm. Hey guys, do you want to see the costumes uh, Costumes that will be used in the play? There are pretty, uh, pr uh, pretty dresses and suits of armor. Pretty dresses? Suits of armor? <laughs> I guess I have your attention. I'll give you an exclusive sneak peek at them before the play, uh, play even starts. Yay! 
I want to go too. I'll be backstage. Come when you're ready. Okay, now follow me. <laughs> Joshua is such a thoughtful boy. I didn't want to speak of this in front of the children. You mean... Yes, I've, I've chosen to accept the mayor's offer. We will impose upon the Minorians no longer. I will tell the children today after the festival. I... I see. Th that's sad, but I suppose you had no choice. <laughs> Please don't look at me so. Grantzel's easily reachable by airship. Moreover, I can look for more... Uh, I can look for work while I'm there. If I save enough Mira, I'll be able to rebuild the orphanage someday. Matron. Now then, let us find the children, shall we? Would I imagine that there had been much for Joshua to handle on his own? Wow, this is so cool! I wonder if I could wear it? Not with how short you are! I wish I could try one of the uh, on the white dress. <laughs> well, well, you look like you're having fun, huh? Where Joshua go? Mr. Joshua? He left after he brought us here. He said, "Wait here until the girls arrive." Hmm. Is something something wrong? Hey, <laughs> I know. Mr. Joshua went looking for the girls with a guy with silver hair. <gasps> silver hair? Yeah, he helped us get out of the fire before. His hair's all shiny and pretty. <gasps> what? So he's been on? Uh, has he's been seen on the campus? Uh huh. Just for the second though. Mr. Joshua was sure surprised. Polly, you dummy! Why didn't you come and tell us any of us? Because I was eating crap. Still. I know. I'll be right back, matron. Yes, that's fine. Chloe, would you please go with her? Don't worry about us. We'll be fine. But you leave. By your leave, matron. Hey, you're going too? Yes, I'm sorry. We'll see you at the play. Yeah, it's gonna knock your socks off. Anyway, let's go find Joshua. I don't know who that guy with the silver hair is. But even without meeting him, he totally creeps me out. Just a moment, please. Seek! Scree! I need to ask you something. Did you uh, see where Joshua went? Squee! I don't think I'll ever get tired of that. Wait, is he headed? No, the old school building down the road, yes. To the old school building down the road? Yes, shall we? There's less people back here, right? Exactly. Just how I like it. Not ve or not very well populated. But with internet. Nice. We found an ominous looking statue over here. I'm pretty sure this is too om Really? Nobody? Okay. That is odd. Back here. Nobody. Feed me, Seymour. I remember. I do remember. Okay, where are they then? That's interesting. Bring up here? Nope. The last room. Nope. Nobody in here. Nobody in here. You really have me going through the entire building. Really. This is how it's gonna go? Nope. Am I gonna find a knocked out Joshua here somewhere? Because I don't want to. Really? That was the last door. Except obviously for this. 
Oh, wait, uh, I was there already. We still have one with the balcony upstairs. We have not seen a proper use for this one. Strange, I could have sworn. But it couldn't be. Joshua! Hey, you two! You need to stop making us worry about you! I almost had a heart attack when I heard you were chasing after some guy with silver hair. Uh, how did you know? Polly told us. I guess she saw you. Ah, she's a pretty sharp eyed kid. I did follow a man matching, ma matching that description uh, out this way. But I guess I lost him? Oh my. He must have been pretty talented, uh, t talented if he managed to give you this slip. Any idea who he was? I'm afraid not. I don't think it was our ar arsonist though. I'll ta I tailed him as long as I could. I see. By the way, why do you run off by yourself? My thoughts exactly. You could have at least left us a message. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to worry about you. Uh, who said I was worried? I, I was just pointing out the importance of the teamwork. <laughs> You're a terrible liar. Not five minutes ago you were in a total panic. I, I, I was not. Uh, and hey, you were pretty concerned yourself. I, uh, um, <laughs> thank you, both of you. <gasps> your, your attention, please. All play personnel, please report to the auditorium right away. Once again, all play personnel, please report to the auditorium right away. Thank you. Oh, yeah, it's almost time, isn't it? Yes, we should get into costume. The play will start soon. All right, then, let's do this. Oh. What about that guy with the silver hair? Hmm... I suppose that all we can do is let Karna know and warn her to keep an eye out. The three then spoke to Karna about the silver-haired man and left for the auditorium immediately afterward. Thirty minutes later... Wow, look at all the people! Uh, okay, now I'm getting kind of nervous. You'll be fine, Estelle. This is what all the rehearsals were, re rehearsals were for. Besides, once we start up, you'll forget they're even there. He looks so pretty. You're the type who can only focus on one thing at a time anyway. Just one thing. I'm actually gonna try to speak him with a um, a little bit of a girlish voice, but still male, and her with a little bit of a manly voice, but still female. I wonder if I can do that. I, I mean, I, who knows, man? Just one thing at a time, huh? Well, I guess I just I'll just focus on the boy in the dress then. That'll be easy. Uh, okay, okay. You can have your little spat another time. <clears throat> this year's campus festival is already a big success, though we have many esteemed individuals here, such as the Duke and the Mayor. We can't afford to be intimidated. So just remember our number number one rule, and you'll be fine. If you're gonna puke, do it off stage. <laughs> We've done a good job of keeping the festival lively so far. Now, let's close it out with a real bang. Ooh, even I'm kinda excited now. Without any further ado, the Student Council pr proudly presents Madrigal of the White Magnolia. Enjoy the show! In year 1100 of the Zeptian calendar, 100 years ago, Liberal was still a land of nobles and aristocrats. But commoners too held some power, and they were prod prodigious trader that, and they were prodigious traders that grew more influential with each passing year. During this period, there was much friction between the classes, and the nobles and commoners clashed often. As time went on, these clashes intensified. The intercession of the royal family and the church failed to end their squabbling. 
The stage was set for a final conflict. A year had passed since illness stole the king from his people. Our tale begins on an early spring evening in the rooftop garden on Gransel Castle. The street lights shine on, shined on everyone, each bright with their own happiness. And in spite of that... Ah, here you are, princess! Please, don't you think you should be going to bed soon? Your royal highness? Staying up so late can surely do no good. It's alright, if I should fall ill... Uh, if that happened, then perhaps I could avoid becoming the last ember in this dying flame we call liberal. Please, don't speak such things! Your Highness, you are the most exhaled, exalted individual and liberal. If you were to take a husband, you could take control of the kingdom. I will not marry. Despite my father's wishes, I shall not consent to it. But why, Your Highness? You have two fine men as suitors, after all. One is Sir Julius of the chivalric order of the Imperial Guards and the eldest son of a duke. And, and Sir Oscar, commoner, though he may be, he has been recognized often in his battles against the Empire. <sighs> Both such fine men! Hmm. No one knows better than I the quality of their characters. Oh, Oscar, Julius, how am I to choose between you two? Oh my, isn't that Joshua playing the role of the princess? <laughs> I suppose that Jill has put a great deal of thought into this reverse casting business. <laughs> Indeed, ma'am. He plays his role well, but the two maids leave such a... leave me to be desired. Do you remember, Oscar? How we spent our boyhood days in this alley, running around, uh, running about and pretending our sticks were swords? I could never forget, Julius. In those days, it was all so simple, with you and with Cecilia alike. I treasure that time greatly. Haha, <laughs> I recall how stunned I was. I always, uh, I would always conspire to play with her in secret, only to discover another had been doing the same. She was lovely, uh, she was as lovely as the sight of the falling petals in spring. Indeed, fair Cecilia was like un uh, was unlike unto her, our very own son. But her light would dim with each day that passed. The nobles and the commoners. The theory that, confl uh, that conflict could never have been avoided. The princess' grief is easily understandable. Cruel fate marks us so. For it is our very existence that has brought her such sorrow. Wow, they're so cool! I hate to say it, but the guy looks, cu looks cuter than the girls. <laughs> Hush now and watch the, uh, watch the show. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of a sip of my water. I'm sorry. Know this, Julius. The commoners' impudence can be tolerated no longer. If they should forget their place and no longer view us as their superiors, liberals' power structure would surely, uh, surely fall into ruin. If I may, Father, it has been roughly ten years since the Eastern Republic was founded. Perhaps the ev eventual seizing of power by the common f people is inevitable in any state? Speak not of such repulsive events. What is freedom? What is equality? What is anything if commoners and nobles alike should cast all tradition aside? Better we should fall to our knees before the Empire's military and concede to their will. Father! <laughs> now, that, now that's a damn fine duke up there. 
You let the commoners get all high and mighty, and your whole society collapses. Your Excellency, perhaps it would be best to keep, keep our voices down. Chairman Card. Oscar, I'm expecting great things from you. If you can get the royal family on our side, we will have a great advantage over the nobles. And that advantage would allow us to seize power. But Chairman, I, I, I cannot consent to this. I could never use Cecilia for political gain. Haha, <laughs> always putting others before yourself, I see. Even though you now have the chance to become king, I'll bait only on paper. paper. <laughs> PayPal. If you would refuse, it will lead only to a bloody uprising and subsequent revolution. Subsequent revolution. The royal family and surely the nobles as well would disappear into the shadows of history. Chairman! Mm, impressive. They've really done their research. I had severe doubts about this ever since I first heard about the reverse role gimmick. <laughs> the students have all put a great deal of work into this play. The young bracers have no have had no small hand in this either. I do not wish bloodshed on anyone, revolution or not. I cannot simply allow Julius and Cecilia to die. As for myself, I know not what I should do. Oh, it's no good. Ugh, no, I'm gonna be sick. Are you alright? You must have quite a bit more than you can handle. It may be spring, but you'll surely catch your death if you sleep out here. Oh, thank you, good sir knight. It has nothing to do with being a knight, but rather simple concern. I would have to be quite the young fool not to see what I must do. You've got that right. What? No. Ah, my arm! <sighs> Just a touch of anesthetic on the blade. Now, if you'll, if you will be so kind as to sit still. Curse you, assassin! Who sent you? Just the noble who wants you out of the picture. He wanted it badly enough to pay me up front, and pretty well at that. All you need to do is die. Ah, I get it. Not bad. Not bad at all. So, up next we should have... Whoops, almost got so wrapped up that I forgot about my work. Long has it been since you have entered my sight, fair princess. Yes, Julius, it truly has. I cannot help but notice Oscar is not with you today. Back when my father yet breathed, the wo both of you were oft, uh, oft, um, were oft spoken of by the maids of the court. As you well know, your highness, the kingdom is in the midst of a crisis most dire. And as such, he and I may never be as close as once we were. I confess, I come to you today to ask a favor. W what favor would that be? That you allow he and I, head of the chivalric order of the high guard, a young and a young general, to engage in a duel of honor. And that the victor shall be granted the great honor of becoming your husband. Haha, <gasps> <laughs> quite, quite dramatic indeed. Caught up in the conflict between noble and commoner, these two close friends have finally, deci finally decided on a duel. The princess now realizes their determination and keeps silent. And on the day of the duel... Two knights step into the grand arena of the royal city. Many have come to witness it. Commoners and uh, royalty alike, but conspicuously absent, absent from the proceedings is the one over whom they fight, the uh, princess, Princess Cecilia herself.
My friend, I fear that this was inevitable. Perhaps fate always intended for us to meet in so base a fashion. Speak, that we may both be unburdened, if nothing else for our beloved princess. We would cleave a path through fate with our own hands. But at this moment, my words and her smile seem lost. Has fear clutched your heart, Oscar? Perhaps, but what is this passion that pierces me to the quick? As I see you with blade drawn, I feel as though I've been waiting for this moment. Before this storm, by the name of revolution, should claim us both. We shall let fate decide our outcome. Yes, and may the goodness above see our spirits as they truly are. Come then, let it be done. On guard! Impressive, Julius. I should say I should say the same on you, of you. But still, you seem to hesitate. What troubles you, Oscar? Is this the extent of your skill? Perhaps the tales of your acts of valor, valor against the Empire were grossly overstated. Ha! Well done, Julius. Magnificent swordsmanship. Also, that war jump was kinda impressive. Gah. Oscar, your arm. I I've had worse. This is but a scratch. Neither of our blades connected with flesh. Not even a glancing blow. Your wound was struck prior. This is a tactic most low. This is a tactic most low, Duke Radmond. Was this your intention from the start? Ha ha ha, I'll thank you to see slandering my good name. Are you implying that I investiga instigated this? Father, is it true? Did you? It's alright, Julius. My own ex inexperience has brought this about. Besides, I've received far worse on the field of battle. Yeah. I will put everything I have behind my next strike. I intend... I intend to kill you, Oscar. Very well. I will wager it all on my next strike as well. For the fair princess and the ki future of the very kingdom. He who lives when all is said and done will inherit the responsibility for all. And he who dies will watch over it all from the realm from the realm of the spirits. Such is also the pride of a knight. Haha. <laughs> I suppose it is. Ah! No! Uh, oh! Cecilia, what? Uh. Princess! Cecilia, why? W weren't you not in attendance? Oh, Oscar, Julius, I, I did not wish to observe a duel between the two of you. I felt I had to d find a way to put a stop to this fight. Praise I, Dios, that I arrived in time. Cecilia, Princess, hear me, all in attendance. Dismiss me and set aside your differences. Please, are we not all of liberal? And do we really have to do this? <laughs> I hate pushing the button early. There is no light. Uh, there isn't so little that separates us from one another. If you would but take your foe's hand, surely we could find a peaceful resolution. Your your royal highness. You need say uh, you need say more no more. My vision fades. But what about you two? W will you not do as I ask? You will be done, my princess. Your will be done, my princess. At your side. Strange. Everything is floating. 
When I was young, I would sneak out of the castle down to the alley. Oscar, Julius, you both always had smiles for me. I love your smiles. So, please, don't ever stop. Uh. Princess! N no, this cannot be! Princess! I'll do anything! Please, no! Cecilia, you... Our poor princess! I just don't understand why she'd do such a thing! Our princess gave her a life that we might stop this unending dispute. Compared to that sacrifice, what a trifle is... What a trifle is the pride of a noble man. Had we not been fighting, it would never have come to this. Only now, when it is too late, do I see our folly. Is this the fate of all men with their spirits still shackled to their flesh? Ideas, great goddess of the skies, we know now, we now know of your great resentment. There is much you do not yet understand, it seems. I granted you flesh to be your vessel. But your spirits still know more of freedom and nobility. Such contempt for it lies only within you yourselves. So beautiful. A more beautiful voice I have never heard. It's amazing. Idios herself has graced us with her presence. The goddess. Incredible. Hear me, young knights. I have observed your contest. You are both both courageous and strong, yet something vital within you is broken. It is as you say. Our own immaturity is what invited this fate upon us. Chairman, has your hate for the nobles and the monarchy blinded you to the fact that we are all but men? I am ashamed. Duke, you know your sins better than anyone else could. And you, all the rest of you, who have simply watched these events unfold, there is something fundamental within, within you, uh, within you that is lost as well. Strike your hand upon your breast and think well upon this. <laughs> and as it now seems that you have, and it now seems that you have each remembered your hearts. As such, perhaps, hope yet remains for a liberal, so long as you never forget the lessons learned this day. Oh, she has vanished. Mm. Oh, where am I? Princess! Cecilia? Oh my, J Julius, o Oscar, H have you both b both been called up to heaven as well? <gasps> it's it's genuine. It's a genuine miracle. Princess, oh praise Idios. What? Wh why are the two of you here? And the Duke, and the Chairman. So then, I'm not dead. Almighty Idios! Idios has given Liberal back its beloved. Praise her for her benevolence. Oscar, Julius, um, what happened? Nothing that you need to concern yourself over, Cecilia. The conflict, conflict is at an end. I believe that everything will be all right. You're being naive, Oscar. We still have a duel to finish, do we not? Julius. No. Y you still intend to fight? On the contrary. This match is concluded. And besides, this fool managed to get hit on a sword arm. But it would not do for a duel such as this to have not have a clear victor. 
Thus it stands to reason that the man who fought with a significant handicap, yet emerged undefeated, should be regarded as the victor. Wait, Julius! Don't misunderstand me, Oscar. I have not given up on the princess. Once you are healed, our duel will continue, but with blades of wood. Just as we were boys. I see. <laughs> Very well then, I accept your challenge. Have neither of you any regard for your own wishes? Y you are mistaken. You, my lady, shall judge today's match, and I think it only, it's only fair for the victor to be, to be granted a kiss. Surely everyone waits with bated breath for it. Very well. Yeah. Don't they look marvelous together? All mighty ideas look well upon this. And may this fine day extend on to eternity. Eternal peace to liberal. Eternal glory to liberal. Haha, <laughs> quite the grand finale. But no matter. And so the curtain fe uh, curtain fell on the madrigal of the White Magnolia to grand fanfare and acclaim. And with its conclusion, an announcement went out that the campus festival had reached its end. The crowd began to disperse and leave the campus, each person wearing a look of contentment. Ah, brilliant, just brilliant! That was one fine play, if the directors allowed you, uh, uh, if the directors allowed to say so. At first I thought people would make fun of us with the role switch like that. I'm so glad we took it seriously. Agreed. The costumes worked out pretty well. I would not want to have to wear mine again though. Corsets are really not my thing. Haha, <laughs> no kidding. Well, it was all for a good cause. And just wait till you see how many pictures the photography club took. <laughs> the ones of you ought to be particularly popular. Uh, give it a rest. The ones of Estelle and Chloe won't exactly drive people away either. The guys w always go nuts for the junior girls. We are really gonna t rake in the mirror. I, I, I mean, uh, all proceedings, uh, all proceeds will go to the good cause. <clears throat> Jill. Hmm. hmm. Estelle, what's wrong? Uh. uh, uh what? What? We? We? What are you talking about? Nothing important, really. You've been spacing out ever since the play finished. Are you okay? Well, that fight scene was pretty hard work, so it's no surprise that you're tired. Do you feel sick? We can't take you into the nurse's office. I I'm fine, really. I deal with fatigue every day as a bracer. I'm just trying to get my head back into order, that's all. Oh, Estelle, you don't mean... No, no, nothing like that at all. I promise I'm perfectly alright. Huh? <laughs> I trust we're not interrupting? Miss Chloe, Oscar was so cool! I want to be the, that cool when I grow up! Haha, <laughs> thank you! You were really great too, Mrs. Still! Ah, Sir Julius! Hey now, Mary! And Joshua was so cute! Yeah, I couldn't stop looking! Um, well, <laughs> thank you! It was great fun for us all! A play about love and friendship, buffet, uh, buffeted, buffeted by the winds of a tum tumultuous era. It was so moving. The fight scene was intense and though one could only expect it to end in tragedy, it had a heartwarming conclusion. I thought it was splendid. Well, 
With praise like that, I have to say I, it was worth the effort. Oh yeah, Hans. Oh right, almost forgot. Huh, what's up? It's nothing, it's nothing bad, don't worry. I'll be right back, so just uh, keep doing what you're doing. Um, okay. Those were Jill and Hans, no? Chloe, your friends are on the student council then? Yes, they were in charge of the production of the play. I see, I must thank them then. The children will have many fond memories of Ruin. Matron. I've made up my mind. I will tell them my decision when we return to Minoria. And then tomorrow, we'll take the first steps. Wow, so soon? Hey, what you talking about? Clem, you shouldn't listen to in on grown-ups talk. It's okay, Mary. But I think we should probably return to the inn. We can have dinner and continue our discussion over there. Okay. Now then, Chloe, and you too, Estelle and Joshua. I'm afraid we'll be taking our leave. Thank you for today. It was a lovely play. Oh, hold on a sec. Jill's coming back any moment and she'll probably want to say goodbye before you go. Pardon me. Oh, Dean Collins! It's a pleasure to see you again, Matron Theresa. I must apologize for not coming by earlier to thank you for taking the time to visit. You needn't thank me. The festival was magnificent. I'm grateful for the invitation. Yes, the students were magnificent, weren't they? Chloe told me of your current situation. Truly dreadful. I was trying to think of a way that we could help. I... Jill? Yes, sir. Please, take this. Jill handed Matron Theresa a bulky envelope, sealed with the Royal Academy's crest. What's this? We took up co a collection for you. It's one million Mira. Please, use it to help rebuild the orphanage. W one million Mira? That's impressive! But... Uh, how? Well, we have the Duke as well as the Mayor of Bose, so there are some celebrities here. Thanks to them, we were able to collect far more than we would have otherwise. Dean! No, I couldn't! I can't accept this! I don't see why not. The festival collections donations, uh, donations for charity every year. People donated specifically to help rebuild the orphanage. But I... It's too much. I... Please accept it, matron. But Chloe, I realize that you're overwhelmed. But think about it. With that much Mira, the rebuilding could start and you wouldn't need to go to Gransel. You wouldn't have to give up on her on your herb garden. <sighs> she speaks the truth. Joseph would want you to accept this for the children. You needn't focus on the amount, just what can be done with it. You're right. I I, I don't know how to show my appreciation. Thank you. Thank you all so much. That's awesome. Yes, that should settle that. Hey, what's this about you going to Grandsir? Did something happen? It's okay. There'll be no need to worry. You've all been through so much. It's really not that big a deal. But, but why are you crying, Matron? Don't be silly, Clem. Don't be silly, Clem. Those are happy tears. After the matron and the children left and returned to, to my return to Menoria, Estelle and Joshua joined the other students in cleaning up after the festival. By the time everything was done, the day had given way to evening. But we had everything set up for you to be able to stay. I mean, the festival just ended and everything. 
Haha, <laughs> sorry, but we can't. Since we're still apprentices, we can't go too long without checking in the inn at the guild. We'd like to give our report before the day's out, if we can. So, you'll have to excuse us. Is that so? Oh well. Guess I'm not my own tonight. Uh, guess I'm on my own tonight. It sure, it sure is going to be lonely in bed without you, Cecilia. What? Hans, could you please give the tasteless jokes a rest? Estelle, don't listen to him. Ah, oh, ha, ha, a, a, a joke? It's never boring with you guys. I'll give you, I, I'll give you that much. I'll, I hope you will get the chance to come see us again. And stay a couple of days and nights. Wink, wink. Uh, sh sure, we will. Th thank you. We're stopping again soon. <laughs> well, let's get going. We'll lose the daylight. Uh, we'll lose the daylight if we don't hurry. So you're he headed to Minoria, Chloe? Yes. There's a lot I want to talk to the matron about. She said it would be all right for me to stay over at the inn with her and the kids tonight. I hate that you won't be here after the festival. Oh well, what can you do? I hope you have a good time. Oh yeah, about the matron and the kids. Isn't it kind of risky for them to be carry on, uh, carrying around that much money? Oh, don't worry about that. One of the other bracers escorted the whole lot of them back to the village. Her name's uh, Karna. Apparently the dean's ma a dean made a special request. Ha, never misses a beat. Well, stay healthy, you guys. They're so here's to, to hoping you guys do great with your bracer studies. Yep, you can count on it. Best of luck to both of you as well. Hmm. We only had a few days at the academy, but it was great fun. Well, other than class, anyway. What are you talking about, Estelle? Normally, students spend most of their time attending classes. The school festival might have been fun, but it was just a special event. Yeah, you're right. Man, being a student is tougher than I thought. Haha. <laughs> hmm? What's wrong? Nothing. It's just that I can't sense Zeke nearby. I wonder where he went. Maybe he's just looking for dinner. Y yes, that may be it. I I'm sorry, I'm just being silly. Please, allow me to come with you as far as, the co as to the coastal road. Sure, it'll be fun. Whoo, what an episode. What an episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed it. I greatly enjoyed it. I hope I will see you in the next episode as well. It's not every time you get to hear me reading out a play. At least like 5 minutes of a play. Well, it was more like 20 minutes, but a real play would be about like 2 hours long. So yeah, usually even more than that. So. I hope you enjoyed it. It's been a quite the spe it's been quite the special episode. It's episode 75, uh, 50, yeah, 75. It's right. I mean, eh, it was kind of about time for a special episode, right? This right? I think so. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I will see you next time. Bye bye.